Good morning, Jay First Baptist Church. It's so good to be with you this this day, this first day of 2021. I know some of you who might be watching may not be from the Jay community, and we invite you to, to look on, and I hope that this brings a blessing to your day. Um, I know for many, this is one of those days you sleep in, you relax, you just take it easy, and I started that. We um, I, I did some made some pancakes earlier today for Carolee and myself. Amy spent the night with her friend and uh, we are uh, we're looking forward to a great year this year, uh, both here as well as um, as all around our area that we do ministry at. I know today probably is going to be uh, a wet day in our area. I don't know where you are at if it's the same, but I've, uh, I've thought about this and prayed about this and thought, you know, we're going to start this year off in what I consider a good way. Uh, we're going to be looking at the book of, of Revelation, and I'm going to be going through it, the entire book. One of the things that prompted me was yesterday, um, I will say, uh, Brother John and his family were so kind to me. They were very kind. They paid for my lunch. I met uh, I met this lovely family down in uh, in the Milton area who are from Jay, and to my surprise, when I was ready to leave, they they were there a little bit before me. I was told that they had paid for my lunch, and I say a big thank you to them, a big thank you to them. It was very kind of you, and um, and I appreciate that. Um, but I was listening to another couple that was at another table or so over. And they were talking. Now I don't know where they're where they came from, where they're at spiritually, but they actually were addressing something on their cell phones, and it had to do with someone who was looking at the at, at, at what was happening in our world today, and saying that we are in the seventh seal, and we're talking about the book of, of Revelation. Now, I would wholeheartedly disagree with that. I look at the end times as a literal end time scenario. I truly believe that. And I know I have friends that that do not. I do not believe it all was accomplished in the past. And I have many friends that, that think it was. Um, I, I have friends who also hold to the pre-wrath rapture, which is the idea that uh, Christ is coming back a little bit past the halfway mark. And, um, and, and, and I, I have some friends that are mid-trib and that are post-trib. So, um, and you might say, what does that mean? That means the seven-year tribulation, either the rapture takes place in the middle, the end, or the beginning. I would be considered a pre-tribulational rapturist, meaning I believe that the church is going to be raptured before the, um, the seven years of tribulation begins. That's before the Antichrist. That's before the mark of the beast. That's before a number of things. And what I was thought as I was listening to, to this couple, they didn't seem to react too much on it other than it was kind of like, they almost blew it off and, and that was about it. Well, um, I thought, you know, and I was thinking about that. Uh, as the church, we need to be aware of really what the Bible tells us about the coming of Christ. Now, I will tell you this, beyond a shadow of a doubt, there is going to be a millennial kingdom. That is very solid, uh, solidly found in prophecies in Scripture. The tribulation, we're going to have a tribulation. There is a seven-year period that is mentioned. The first half is not as, worse, as bad as the last half, and many call the last half as the great tribulation. And I would agree with that. There's enough support for that, that pretty much if you're not a non-millennialist, meaning you don't believe in any of this, you think it's all just... A bunch of allegory um, and that it's all symbolic uh, you won't believe in any of this anyway but I think there's enough prophecies to to give various um, ideas on what's going to happen when now here's where and, and I would say this ra the the rapture of the church is the big question because there's probably enough leeway on what is not given in Scripture that people will argue over this I think there is enough uh, uh, enough information if you compile the scriptures together that talk about the tribulation that I truly do believe we're going to be taken out all the church will be raptured to the glories of heaven before the rapture because I do believe 
the full rapture is the um is the is basically the 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 judgment on this earth from God and there will be a great judgment and I believe that there's three parts to the tribulation mentioned you have the opening of the seals you have the trumpets and you have the bowls I do not believe these are the same things rehashed or re-mentioned I believe they are uh, they are different items and I look at it kind of like a telescope you know the old-fashioned telescopes that as they pulled out the one piece was inside the next, inside the next, but when they extended, they were all um, different areas on the scope. Well, the same, I believe, with, with, with these items, with the seals first being the first to steps, and then when the last seal is opened, then the trumpets are then used. And then as the last trumpet is being, that, that judgment is being given, then the final uh, judgments from the bowls. So that's how I look at it. Uh, many would call this the the traditional or the or the normal dispensational view of it, and I would I would consider myself a dispensationalist, not looking at the eras of history as rigid sections where God worked primarily in only one way, but as a general guidelines to as we observe how God dealt with people throughout the ages and, and people groups that we see certain normal ways of God's dealing. That's how I look at the dispensations. So somewhat might call me not quite a dispensationalist, and that's all right. Uh, but we're going to look at Revelation and, and this wonderful book that John was given as a vision, and he wrote this down. And for some, I've heard many Christians say, I'm afraid of Revelation. I'm just afraid of all of this. And it's scary. Well, you know what, if you do not know Christ as Savior, I would say it can be scary. Because what is coming is going to be very devastating, unlike what we've ever seen. And I will tell you, 2020 was a tough year. We have gone through a year where, at least in our generation, we have never seen a pandemic like this. Now, of course, it was not the Black Death. It's still not the Black Death. It's worse, and I would agree with a gentleman who's a talk, uh, who's a talk show host who is very, very intelligent. Um, he is, on, or I believe he's, he holds more toward the Orthodox Jewish belief, and um, he's a young man. He's, he's uh, studied as a lawyer, and, and his name is Ben Shapiro, and I, I, I enjoy listening to him. He gets a little bit out there at times, but I think... When it comes to the facts, he is a fact checker. He want, he loves the facts. And he made a statement, uh, a good statement, um, pertaining to all of, um, uh, to, to this COVID-19 virus. And he, he's married to a medical doctor. And so he has some grounds of, um, and he has good foundation in this statement. He said, it's not the Black Death, and I would agree with him on that. He says it's worse than the flu, and I could agree with him on that because the flu usually doesn't do to what's happened with certain people has not given the same problems such as pneumonia and other things and fatigue like the flu. The flu is more temporal, and now the flu can kill a person, but this is probably worse than the flu, but not Black Death like they had many, many centuries ago in Europe. Um, this pandemic is a little bit... Uh, the, this virus is easier to get than the flu virus. And we don't know if it's going to morph into and change into other um, more intense versions of itself. We just don't know. Um, we pray that this, that, that these inoculations, that these uh, shots that are going to be given out will help. And I, I really do hope and pray that that's going to be the case. But we've gone through a tough year. Uh, economically, many have suffered. Um, I do believe in, in our area in Jay, we've been protected by the hand of God. Um, most of our people that I come in contact with have not lost their jobs or have been able to get jobs, and they are working. Uh, our farmers have done well. They've had a little bit of a hard time, too, because of our farmers had, had, had to deal with uh, Sally in this area and then Zeta, who, the, the, the winds of Zeta, but many have done uh, good. And, and the businesses in our area are coming back online, which I'm very, very happy and pleased with. 
And I think in other parts of the country we've seen this. There are some that have been very devastated. I know you go to the south part of Santa Rosa County. There has been such a great uptick in needs from people who've lost jobs and we pray for them regularly and we try to offer as much assistance as we can. I know over the course of this summer, uh, this past summer, I was able to go with our association director and I drove the truck. We went out to Mariana. We picked up, oh, was it six pallets of food to be to be distributed by churches throughout the Santa Rosa area. And um, we've tried to help others and we've tried to send monies to help in these areas. And and I think the the church has really done a good job in many areas. Yes, it's still hard. There are still places that are shut down. We're very fortunate in this state not to have that. But let me just encourage us. We need to keep looking forward. 2021 is a year. We don't know what God has for us in this year. We just don't. But I do know this. I've heard and I've seen a lot of YouTube channels and stations and programs that people are really striving and, and reaching for things that really aren't there when it comes to the end times. And my prayer is this, I will be very biblical in what I state and I will try my very best not to be biased in areas, but to look at this text with you as we go through the book of, of Revelation together. And we will do this on the mon Monday, Wednesday and Fridays um, that, that I would be um, getting this, uh, th this broadcast out. And my goal is to do it about 10 o'clock on those days. So let us look at one verse to start with today, and then we'll, have, we'll close in prayer. This will, will be our shortest of our studies together. And I'm looking at chapter 1 of Revelation, verse 3. And, and this, let, let's start at the very first verse. We'll do verses 1 through 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent this... Uh, and signified it by his angel to his servant John. Well, we start out with how this book came about. Now, we have to understand something. When, sa when God says, must shortly come to pass or soon come to pass, that's what the Greek word states. It does not mean soon exactly in that generation. And remember, in God's eyes, his, his eyes, he's eternal. He may not always see time as we look at it. And in his mind, soon, it could, could be at the end of the era and, and the end of the age. And it could come within a couple thousand years. It could be shorter than that. I do not believe it's happened yet. So we're talking over about 2,000 years almost that this was, well, actually a little shy of 2,000 years. So we're looking still forward um, to, to this, but in God's mindset and in God's time frame, still soon, it's not something that's going to go on for thousands and thousands of years, and then he'll decide to for all of this to happen that's mentioned here in the book of, of Revelation. Verse 2, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So John wrote all these things down. All that he saw. And then verse 3, and this, this pertains to us in particular. Blessed is he that reads, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And fellow Christians, I truly believe, and from a dispensational vantage point, I look at the church age as the in-between week 69 and week 70 of, the Daniels, of Daniel's prophecy. We will look at that also. That's how I look at it. Now, you might disagree with that, and that's all right. But that's how I look at this, that we're in that in-between state that the last seven years, that tribulation will be that 70th week of Daniel. And when I say the 70th week of Daniel, that prophecy, I, and most scholars would agree with this, that, that look to a literal end time scenario for the end times, not just an allegorical one, that they would say that each day in the week would, would would represent a year in, in true history time. So we're looking at seven years still to go. But he says here, blessed is he. Now you might say, well, there are some, there are some things in, in the book of Revelation that just scare me. 
Well, there are some very tough things in, in Revelation, but for the born-again Christian, let me encourage you. This book is a blessing. It does a couple things in our lives. Number one, it encourages us to, to, to keep up the evangelism. I don't want one of my friends or one of my neighbors or one of my colleagues who may not know Christ as Savior to go through this. That would be horrendous. So what we need to do is we need to truly uh, look at this book, whether you do it as I do the broadcast or whether you do it on your own or whether you get a book and do it with. I know we have a Sunday school class in our church that has been using my father-in-law's uh, book on this called Revelation Visualized. It's a great book on this. It's very, very, it, it, the commentary makes it easier to understand this topic. And it is a good, it, it is a very good commentary. And he is a, he is a Christian Jewish man. And he wrote it with Salem Kirbin, who is a Christian Arab. Now that's quite interesting. And it's done in a very nice manner, and it is very understandable. And I'll tell you, the women in that class love this study. And so I, I thought, you know, this would be something. Let's go through this. We're not going to touch on everything in, in, in the book of, of Revelation, but we are going to get into it and maybe give some clarity. And as I said, if you don't, don't agree with everything that I say, that's all right. I'm not here to twist anybody's arm, but I'm here to try to give a true biblical perspective on this book. And my thing for you today is, blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Fellow Christian, this is a great blessing because number one, it does encourage us to be a, a soul winner, to go out and share this to the world. And what it also does, it shows us that God has a definite plan for the history of man and that he is in control. Let's bow for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. We do thank you for the opportunities you give us. And Lord, I just ask that as we start to endeavor in this study of the book of, of Revelation, that we look at it from a very biblical perspective and one that is not just trying to reach and grab at straws, but from a perspective of good hermeneutical understanding of this passage. And may you give us your wisdom and your good insight. And may it bring clarity to those that are, that are following this. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. I hope and pray that you have a great day today. God bless. Shalom. And Happy New Year.